Greetings. A few days ago I did a video with several UPSs, including one which was made by Garlatrek, a large ferro-resonant UPS, which we used to use to run a telephone system. We've had a few of these uh, Garlatreks all running telephone systems. And what I've got here today is the maintenance bypass panel. And what this would be used for is if you need to take the UPS out of service, for example, to change the batteries, what you can do is you can put this into bypass mode, which now runs the load directly on the mains and turn the UPS supply off. And the UPS is now isolated. The device, in this case, a telephone switch, is running straight to the mains and the UPS is completely disconnected from the mains. You can turn the UPS off take the lid off, change the batteries, put it back together and then put the UPS supply on, make sure the UPS is on again and then switch back into normal operation. So I thought I'd take a look inside this. Before I do so, notice it says on the front, do not operate bypass switch if the UPS is on battery. So if the mains is off, it says do not switch that. Now that is not a load protection notice. It's actually a safety notice. It's to protect uh, not only the UPS but also the incoming supply. And I'll show you why in a moment. But anyway, let's take a look inside first. The lid is earthed with a cable bolted in place. I've already undone the nuts and the screws so that comes straight off. And the first thing you can see is we've got the UPS output and input with the rest of the stuff shielded. And that means that as long as the UPS itself is switched off and the supply is in bypass and the input of the UPS is off, you can't get a shock from here. You can work on this completely safely because everything else, your load is still protected and all those connections are still in there, out of the way, perfectly safe. We also have a pair of fuses here as well. We'll see how those fit into the whole thing in a moment. Inside this lid then, there is another earth connection bolted. And you can see we've got the output to the load. So that's, in this case, the network switch, the telephone switch, sorry. And we've got the supply mains as well. So that's the incoming connection. And we've got a, a board here with some so it's suppression, this is a toroid, a, a voltage dependent resistor and some filter capacitors with the bleed resistor across the, across the main one. And then we have these two switches. This is the on off switch. It's a single, it's a double pole single throw switch with the live connections on the top and the neutrals at the bottom. And we have the bypass switch then, which is a double pull, double throw switch. This is the common connection. And then we've got these ones and those ones down there. And the fuses connect in as well. And we can take a look at the schematic, which shows the way these inputs and outputs are all interconnected. And you can also see the way the filter works as well. It's a little bit complicated to try and trace with all these connections on. So if I strip all the neutral and earth connections away and most of the filtering stuff, we're just left with the live connections and we can trace the path through. And here we can also see where the fuses come in. Fuse 1 protects the supply coming in and going through to the output of the load when the panel is in bypass mode. Fuse 2 protects the supply to the UPS as long as the UPS is switched on. And we can see the bypass switch selects the output between either coming from the UPS or from the mains. Remember I said about this warning here, and the reason for that is that this is a make before break switch to make sure that there is no interruption to the load when this is switched over from one side to the other. This wiping contact here will make contact with the new position before it lets go of the old one. So briefly, it's connected to both. And that is where this comes in. So if I hook my meter up between the live output from the UPS, so that will be protecting the load, and the incoming main supply, listen now as I switch between bypass and normal. Wow. 
what that's doing, if I take it to the halfway position, that is now linking the output of the UPS to the incoming main supply. And while it's doing that, if you did that during the power cut, your UPS, for one thing, your UPS is now back feeding the mains, and if that's connected to a step-up transformer, which it more than likely will be, that is now stepping up the mains to the distribution voltage and could well be electrocuting one of the engineers working on the line or trying to feed the rest of the neighbourhood. I mean, trying to feed the rest of the neighbourhood isn't going to last long because the fuse is going to blow. But if you did that, if you switched this over and there's an engineer working on the line, boop, you've just given him a nice little 11,000 volt kick and thrown him off the pole. Not to mention, if you left it in that position and the mains comes back, now your UPS might be up to 180 degrees out of phase with the main supply. So your UPS is going to pick a fight with the local supply grid and this thing is going to get caught in the middle. And something else to bear in mind as well is if you've got this main switch off, so you've now switched over to your, your running on battery, your UPS the output frequency is no longer tied directly to the mains. It should be 50 or 60 hertz, but it's going to start drifting away from the main supply. So when you come switching back, it could be anything up to 180 degrees out of phase. So you're got, you've got your UPS output at the 240 point of the waveform, and the incoming main supply is at minus 240 volts. So this is all of a sudden a 480 volt fault. These fuses are going to go straight away. The switch might go bang. It's, it's certainly not going to go quietly if you did that with this bypass panel. And that is because this is designed to seamlessly switch. If that was a break before make and you did that slowly, there'd be no output. So what you'd have is and you'd have to switch this really quickly to prevent the load packing in and the load might crash anyway. So that's why this is like this. So this isn't just, this isn't the same as a, as a manual transfer switch, which would take the power off and then turn it back on on the other one and then return back. This is meant as a maintenance bypass and you'd have to be very, very careful and very lucky in fact, using it as an automat, as a, as a transfer switch. Because in that mid position, it's connecting your two alternate supplies. But anyway, that's what's in a manual maintenance bypass switch, and that's how it compares to, for example, a, a transfer switch, where you need to do the disconnect before the reconnect. And now you know why they operate slightly differently. Hope someone's found that useful or interesting. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you soon.